today I'm going to talk about a teaching tool um, that's in, incorporated into a 801 class. Um, it's in the Teal version of 801 and 802, and it was developed by Professor John Belcher. It had a lot of roots here at MIT in the Integrated Studies Program, by, developed by Arthur Steinberg at Experimental Study Group, had developed a lot of the pedagogical ideas, and then John um, worked on uh, looking at other elements of studio physics to build um, our Teal course, which has been going on for 15 years as an ongoing experiment. But today I want to just talk about um, a new tool that we've been using um, called Lightboard uh, Videos, and we have a team that's been developing it. Um, Dr. Tomasek, um, Dr. Rayan uh, Deepdo, Chakrabarty have been leading this. But really the person up in the right is super important, Jim Kane, because he built our Lightboard Studio for us, and this is what it looks like. It's an incredibly simple thing. It's a pane of glass, basically, that you can write on. And with that pane of glass, we have a computer, a camera, and I'd like to show you some of the ways that we're incorporating this into a blended learning environment today. Um, so the history of the Lightboard video was developed by um, Michael Peshkin um, just a couple of years ago. And we started making these videos in 2005. Um, and we first put them into our course in 2016. Um, we built a full set of videos for 801. And now we're, and we made about 300 of these videos. I'll show you a few examples today. They're all very short, um, and they're integrated into our blending learning environment. Now we're starting the process of, of developing these videos for 802. And so let's just kind of look at what it looks like. So we have a lot of different uses. Today I just want to show you three short excerpts of uses and then highlight some other types of uses. So let me um, go over here and just show you a few seconds. Recall that we described the angular velocity as the derivative of d theta dt. So alpha is the second derivative d theta dt squared k hat. And this quantity is what we call angular um, acceleration. Um, that's the first question that everybody asks. How do you draw left-handed and backwards? And it takes a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> takes a year. <laughs> the, the computer flips the image. I'm going to show you a few more examples. Um, this topic was angular acceleration and angular velocity, which are two topics that are extremely difficult for students to grasp because they're very counterintuitive um, in terms of the vectorial quantities that are involved in them. Um, so the next one, um, let's see, uh, yeah. This one is from Professor Friebel, Anna Friebel, and she is just describing a Determine example the problem. the moment of inertia of a big wheel. Here we have a big wheel, and on the side, it's, it's attached here at the center, and uh, there's a string going around here, and uh, on that string is a little mass hanging. And uh, our disk here has a radius r, now, and um, we now want to know, in a little experiment... Um, just giving you an example of just an introduction to these. Now, what students do is they immediately move it up to twice the speed because it's very slow like this. They look at this whenever they want. Um, if they're solving a problem on this, they can review it. I think very few people actually look at it at the one speed. When I see them going at uh, just the regular speed, it's very, very slow. But students can see this. They can stop it. They can review. They can go back. They can use it whenever they want. Um, um, the next example that I want to show you is an example of Using this for disseminating um, re contemporary research information, this is Professor Vladin Vulatek, and he's giving a, this is just an excerpt from a long lecture on friction, which has um, uh, a quantity that's not always very well explained in class, and Vladin's research group is doing a lot of work on this. So he's about to describe a model with a substrate and a spring, um, uh, atoms above the substrate, oscillating above them, and I'll give you a, just a little bit of Vladin describing how the energy sure. of this system works. The spring, well, the spring has a, a linear force. The force is proportional to the displacement, which means the potential is quadratic in displacement. 
So this is the potential of a spring. This is what the spring does, and this is what the substrate does. And what we need to do is we need to add these two together. So what that means qualitatively is that the total potential of the system might look something like this. Mm -hmm. So as we now translate the spring across the surface with some velocity, then you can see that this addition between the fixed substrate potential, this one is fixed, and this spring potential is moving, you can see that this will lead to a time varying potential for the object. So let's look now in a simulation what that time variation might look like. Okay, so what you see here is a combination of a spring and the periodic potential. And the periodic potential has been chosen a slightly different strength than I'm showing you here. It has been cho chosen weaker so that instead of many minima in this total potential, there are only two minima. And what you see happening in the system is that as the particle is moving, the spring tries to pull it across a periodic, uh, across a maximum of the periodic potential. At some point, the atom is released, and it, uh, it releases energy that is taken up as heat by the, by the substrate. OK, so um, what's interesting here is the opportunity to do simulations that you can in, put on these um, Lightboard videos. I think the important thing is there are, video is a language that students are very comfortable with. Um, if I want to find out how to do something, if I need to replace a lock on the door, I look on a video. Um, it's now, you know, the content is, I think, um, more important than the media. So if some students like text, they can use text. If they like video, they can use video. Um, what's, what's, what I like about this is there's a lot of nonverbal communication cues that are missed when someone is back to the wall and writing and looking over their shoulder at you. And so it's directly... Um, uh, presented to the audience. Um, so let me just go back and talk about some of those aspects. Um, so, um, so the Lightboard video, um, the important point is that these are short. And they're embedded. We have a lot of them. They're three to six minutes. Um, they're easily accessible by the students. Um, they fit into the learner's schedule. They can look at them whenever they want. Um, there's been studies about how people look at textbooks, and it seems like only before the exam or the text looked at. And we're doing now studies comparing how students look at the text or the Lightboard videos in the class to see when they choose to use uh, which uh, media. They're, I think the important thing is they're really inexpensive to produce. We go into the studio. Michelle and I are there for two hours, and we get about 10 five-minute videos. Um, then um, post-production enhancement, you saw that um, we can put on simulations into the videos. And I said before that the nonverbal communication skills cues are really crucial when a person is writing on the board and everybody sees where their eyes go and what their language and what they're, um, what they're looking at. That's important to engage the viewer. Um, now, the key thing about these, we're using them in an integrated fashion. On, you know, on our online part of our course, we use the MITx platform. And what we can do is we can structure the online blended learning part with video, with problem solving, with concept questions. And what it does is it frees up time in the classroom where we can now focus more on the learning and the activities that the students are doing. So I think that's a key part to this. It's clear that the major limitation is that it's non-interactive. But it would be exciting to introduce some type of tutorial element to them. Um, and finally, uh, we use these in a variety of different ways. I just want to summarize. Um, we use them for derivations, conceptual introductions. We review class material, supplementary mathematical content, problem-solving methodologies, worked examples, hints, in-depth exploration, like you saw in Vladen's video. And what's really interesting is we also, in the Teal classroom, we have eight faculty who are teaching in there. There's a lot of things that they've never taught before. And so we use these videos for teacher training. Faculty look at them <laughs> before the class, and it gives them much more confidence when they go into the class when they're dealing with some difficult topics like gyroscopes. It has, it, you know, it's an incredibly flexible medium. 
It can be used for student to student talking. You know, every time we're in there, we can think of a different way that we want to use it. Um, so it's, it's a very flexible, adaptable medium to any type of course, language course, physics, you name it. Okay, so that's just what I want to show you this new tool.